Why is it, when it comes to awarding excellence in the theatre, that acting and performance on stage is defined inherently by gender? The Tony Awards, you have a problem. Oh my god, hey, welcome back to my theatrical YouTube channel. If you're meeting me for the first time, hello. My name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. I'm an independent freelance theatre critic based here in the UK, and I'm also a theatre pundit and content creator here on YouTube. And in my very busy life as a theatre critic here in London, I have been to two events this week which are pertinent to today's conversation. So on Monday afternoon, I was thrilled to be invited to the Stage Awards, and it was celebrating excellence in UK theatre. And this is an indication that we are at the beginning of the theatrical awards season here in the UK and in the US, we are beginning to approach the run-up to the Tony Awards. We have a lot of conspicuous big Broadway openings coming up soon, and the Tonys have just issued an update in terms of eligibility for the awards, in terms of who will be considered in certain categories. More on that momentarily. The other event which I have been to was tonight. I was lucky enough to get to go to the gala night opening of the beautiful show My Sons Are Queer, But What Can You Do? The brilliant one-person show by the wonderful non-binary talent taking the West End by storm um Rob Madge. This is an incredible autobiographical show all about Rob's own upbringing and their remarkable parents and the value of raising queer children authentically and wholeheartedly and with unconditional support. This is the show's second West End run. It played at the Garrick Theatre last year. It did a little season at the Edinburgh Fringe. It is going from strength to strength and I'm so pleased that we have this kind of fantastic non-binary representation in the West End because otherwise right now the UK feels rife with transphobia on many different fronts. And so having been at this show and celebrating and applauding and uplifting this wonderful non-binary artist, I get home and I see this particular news story that I'm going to talk to you about right now. So Justin David Sullivan, a trans non-binary actor currently performing on Broadway, has removed themselves from eligibility for the Tony Awards in 2023. And the reason for this is all to do with the Tony Awards gendered acting categories. Why did they feel the need to do this? Is this the first time that this has happened? And is there a solution that the Tony Awards should be implementing in order to prevent this from happening? I will be answering all of those questions for you in today's video. But before I do, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to subscribe to my stagey YouTube channel. I make content like this all the time, as well as reviewing all the shows that I get to see here in the UK. And I'm also planning my first ever trip to Broadway in a couple of months time. So make sure you stay tuned for all of the content I'm going to be bringing you in the first half of 2020. Also, if you would like to get access to some exclusive content on my channel, you can click in the first link in the description down there to become one of my YouTube members. Thank you so much for all of your support. Now let's talk about the Tony Awards. So a little bit of background and context to all of this. Justin David Sullivan is currently playing the role of May in the musical And Juliet, which recently transferred to Broadway from the West End. Now I mentioned before that the Tonys had just announced some updated eligibilities, and this is something that they do every year and are very transparent with. It frustrates me to a certain end that the Olivier Awards are not as transparent with eligibility and you don't really find out until nominations come out what categories someone will have been considered in. For example, and this has nothing to do with today's debate, but Sharon D. Clark played uh, Willie Loman's wife in Death of a Salesman when the production was here in London at the Piccadilly Theatre and she was nominated for Best Leading Actress in a Play. The same production has gone to Broadway, she plays the same role and she has been nominated as a Featured Actress. Personally, I think the latter is the correct category. I say she's been nominated, I don't mean she's been nominated. She is being considered eligible as a Featured Actress, excuse me. She may be nominated, I'm just manifesting that for her today. But I do think Featured Actress is correct for that role. However, what happens when there's no category that your performance can go into? Not because it's not clear whether you are leading or featured, but because the performance categories exist in a gender binary. So evidently the Tony Awards will still be using gendered categories this year. That is to say, best leading performance by an actor in a musical, best leading performance by an actress in a musical, and then featured actor in a musical, featured actress in a musical, and the same for awards for performance in a play. So non-binary actors on Broadway were faced with a choice. They had to decide which 
acting category to submit themselves in or to be submitted in by the producers of the show. And the news that we are hearing today is that Justin David Sullivan from Anne Juliet has declined to be nominated for either category. Let's read a little bit more about this story and I'll tell you some more of the details. So Justin David Sullivan is trans non-binary and uses the pronouns he, she, and they. Sullivan, whose performance has been generally well received, was among many people who could have been nominated as a featured performer in a musical. This is not a leading role, but it is a featured role, and it's a good featured role. There is every chance that they could have been nominated for a Tony, which makes this all the more disappointing. Here is a quote from them. They have said, I felt I had no choice but to abstain from being considered for a nomination this season, Sullivan said in a statement on Wednesday. I hope that award shows across the industry will expand their reach to be able to honour and award people of all gender identities and we're going to talk a little bit more about whether that is going to be possible and how that might work and how that might look by the end of today's video so stay with me. The Tony Awards have accepted Sullivan's position meaning that Sullivan will not appear on the list of Tony eligible performers considered by nominators at the end of the season. Simply will not be an option to be nominated. Now I'm not here to pass judgment on this decision but if Justin David Sullivan feels that this was the right thing for them I can only support and applaud that. I think it's an incredibly difficult position that any trans non-binary actor has been put in with this situation and I'm not sure that there is a good way of navigating it, honestly. Because I'm thrilled that this role has been cast authentically on Broadway. It's not the most clean cut of uh, representative uh, queer roles. When the role was originally cast here in the UK, it was not with an openly non-binary actor. That has since been amended, and the show now makes efforts to consistently cast non-binary performers in this role. But on Broadway, I like that it's authentic, and I would celebrate these performers being similarly authentic in their performances and in this moment. And I think this is a tremendous show of integrity from this performer. It's so disheartening that that kind of brilliance can't be recognized by Tony nominators. And we'll never know if Justin was going to receive a Tony nomination or not, but I do think it must be tremendously disappointing and they are the one who is going to lose out as a result of this. Now you may be wondering if this has ever happened before, and it did just last season. So Asia Kate Dillon, another non-binary performer, was playing the role of Malcolm in last season's revival of Macbeth and similarly declined to be made eligible for either of the relevant acting categories. This, according to the New York Times article, was not known until a Tony Awards spokesperson revealed it on Wednesday. Now for this to happen more than once historically shows issue enough, but for it to happen two consecutive seasons in a row seems incredibly conspicuous. This feels like it's saying the Tony Awards, you have a problem. And disappointingly, this should have been a red flag to indicate that there was a problem last season and talks should have happened for this to be rectified. But as we're about to find out, that did not happen and it hasn't been. But Justin David Sullivan is not the only non-binary performer currently appearing on Broadway. J. Harrison G. has currently been receiving rave reviews for their performance in the new musical Some Like It Hot. And they, interestingly, have been made eligible for the category of Best Leading Actor in a Musical, even though they are also a non-binary performer. And they had this to say. I'm not going to put myself on this pedestal like I need to change it today. I never go into things expecting to be the person that changes everything. I'm just showing up and meeting the moment, which equally I think is a perfectly valid response to this very challenging and difficult situation. So what do the Tony Awards have to say about all of this? Well, here is their response. We recognize that the current acting categories are not fully inclusive, and we are currently in discussion about how to best adjust them to address this. Unfortunately, we are still in process on this, and our rules do not allow us to make changes once a season has begun. We are working thoughtfully to ensure that no member of our community feels excluded on the basis of gender identity in future seasons. If you're not sure why 
that should be an issue, why they can't change rules halfway through a season. Uh, it's because there are productions which have been and gone and have already lobbied individuals for certain roles and it's it would just be too much of an administrative overhaul. However, that is not a good excuse given that we just talked about this having happened last season. As I said, that should have been the prompt for them to address this situation and consider it moving forwards. It's not like you're not going to have valid and talented and worthy trans and non-binary performers in uh, any given Broadway season. That's a reality of modern society, as it should be. We should be inclusive on our stages. I think it's brilliant that there are so many fantastic trans and non-binary performers. Like I said, I was at a beautiful show this evening by an incredible non-binary talent. And as wonderful as I think that is, I also don't like that this whole conversation reduces them to that single identification. They are so much more than their gender identity. We all are. Is that argument enough for abolishing gendered acting categories altogether? Again, we're gonna talk about it by the end of today's video, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So evidently, I think the Tony Awards have been negligent in not doing something to address what was obviously going to be a growing issue on Broadway. Let's take a look at what other awards have done in the meantime. So it was just recently announced that the Outer Critics Circle Awards would be doing away with gendered acting categories altogether. They have the benefit of being an awards that recognize both Broadway and off-Broadway performances. So that will be the divider. They will award leading actors in Broadway shows, featured actors in Broadway shows, and they will acknowledge leading actors in off-Broadway shows and featured actors in off-Broadway shows. I'm using the term actors here, by the way, to be completely gender inclusive, um, and that's not gender discriminatory. I'm not saying actor rather than actress. I'm saying actor to include everyone. I just thought I would clarify that. Meanwhile, the Obie Awards have always had inclusive categories. And over here in the UK, there have been another few examples. So the What's On Stage Awards, which are coming up in February and which are voted for by the public, have recently amended the technicalities of their categories. They may look similar, but the wording has changed slightly. Rather than recognizing male and female performers in different categories, they are now considering it by the role that they are playing. So the category, I believe off the top of my head, is Best Leading Actor in a Male Identifying Role in a Musical best leading actor in a female identifying role in a musical, featured in a male identifying, featured in a female identifying. So it is divided by the characters being male or female, which is all well and good for now, but it does feel like a temporary measure because it will not be too long and it shouldn't be too long before we have such a level of queer inclusion that there are fantastic performers in trans and non-binary roles because if we want to be completely representative, there should be authentic trans characters on stage being played by trans performers. And there have been in the past. And I should add to that non-binary characters as well specifically, because those trans characters that we've seen in previous shows like Bernadette in Priscilla, Queen of the Desert may more neatly fit into male identifying and female identifying than a non-binary character. It's evident from all of this that this is a difficult conversation to have, but one that is worth having. Because this year alone in the West End, there is a major new production of a play called Orlando starring Emma Corrin, a non-binary performer, in what is ostensibly a non-binary role. So it will be very interesting to see how that one is handled. That production and its performances are not currently eligible for the Watson Stage Awards that are about to take place, but they will be eligible for the Olivier's. So those will be the awarding body that will be the first to have to make a decision on how to navigate that. Interestingly, the Olivier's recently nominated Emma Corrin as an actress, despite being an openly non-binary performer. So similarly, the Olivier's being our version of the Tony Awards over here, being the major London theater awards, they have done nothing in recent years to address the increasing number of trans and non-binary performers in London shows. And I do think a reckoning is on its way. It's not just this production of Orlando. Hopefully we are going to see more and more trans and non-binary performers. And I think it's becoming increasingly conspicuous and uncomfortable and unfair to try and shoehorn them into inappropriate categories.
If we look outside of the theatre world, we see non-gendered categories in other awards. The Grammy Awards have had genderless categories for some time now. However, another issue begins to arise, and this is the main criticism of this approach, is that these categories can often then become male-dominated, as so many entertainment industries unfortunately are. And yet, I would argue we've actually been seeing that already at the Olivier's and at the Tony's for decades now, and we haven't noticed. I'm not talking about acting anymore, I am talking about directing and composing and all of these creative categories where there has always been a certain amount of male dominance, but for some reason, those categories have never been split by gender. So let's talk about this. Why is it when it comes to awarding excellence in the theatre that acting and performance on stage is defined inherently by gender? You are a leading actor in a musical, you are a featured actress in a play, but directing, choreographing, set design, costume design, composition, book, all of these other facets of the theatrical creative experience they're not defined by gender at all, and why would they be? It seems ridiculous to award male and female set designers in different categories, so why suddenly when it's acting do we feel the need to separate those two? Is it because there's something inherently different about the way that a male identifying performer will act versus how a female identifying performer will act? Obviously in the world of sport there is endless debate about making everything fair and certain advantages that men may have over women, but when it comes to acting on stage, I don't see that male performers do have any kind of an advantage. I see a lot of people talking about the roles for men being better, and very possibly in classic plays this might be the case, but there are so many fantastic female roles, arguably, I say this year when it comes to plays on Broadway, the most hotly contested race is going to be best leading actress in a play. And I feel like that's almost always the case in musicals as well especially when it comes to featured performer. And if we are arguing that there is something inherently different about a way that a man or a woman would approach performing on stage and it makes sense to group them together for that reason, I would argue plenty of performers have given interviews saying there is something inherently different about the way male and female directors operate. But we have for a long time been perfectly comfortable having them all be considered in one genderless category. No, the real reason is actually because these awards are televised and they want ratings and they want people to tune in and the acting awards are, let's be honest, the ones people really care about, at least where we are awarding an individual rather than a show. So we split the categories into genders because it means that we can hand out more awards, we can celebrate more individuals, never mind the fact that we're only celebrating half as many directors, half as many choreographers. Over here in the UK, there is a single award for best director. It is not even split into plays and musicals. One director gets an award, but people lose their minds when you talk about genderless acting categories and only four actors would get recognised. I'm digressing here, but I do think that people's perspectives on this can be a little bit skewed, because everyone is very concerned that if we were to make these genderless categories, we wouldn't be uh, awarding as many acting performances, and I would encourage you to consider how few creatives are acknowledged every single year. But not only that, if it's so important to everyone within the industry that we still honour eight acting performances, there are better ways that we can do this. I am not advocating for a non-binary category, I think that's incredibly reductive and patronising if I'm being completely honest. I do think that there are ways we could implement genderless awards categories and it would still work and we would still be able to award eight different performances. For example, you could try and split tonally with comedy versus tragedy. This is something we see already at the Golden Globes. They have drama and then they have musical or comedy. Now lumping all musicals in with comedy is ridiculous because you have Les Mis that still ended up with the comedy, but that's not the point. You could widen the nominating pool and you could award it to two individuals. And yes, there might be years where it goes to two men. There might be years where it goes to two women. We've seen Tony years where there wasn't that much compelling material for leading actors in a musical, but there was such a race between the women in the leading actress category. I feel like we've seen that many different times. I reject this argument, at least in the theatre, 
that the men have all the best material. There have been so many incredible female performances on Broadway and in the West End that have made for incredibly tight awards races. This I am particularly keen to hear your thoughts on in the comments section down below. How do you think we should be awarding acting performances on stage. If you were able to completely get rid of the existing system and throw everything in the air, how would you categorize these different performances? And what other kinds of awards could we be implementing? I think there's a great way of revising the whole system and starting to award best ensemble cast so that productions like Come From Away, where there's not one obvious emerging performance, but a hugely talented and cohesive ensemble that is arguably harder to maintain, could also also be recognized and I could honestly go back years and tell you so many shows where that really ought to have been recognized. In the meantime, I don't think this is the last we've heard of this particular issue with the Tony Awards. The Tonys are in June, it is only the very first day of February. We have a lot of discourse about this between now and then. As the New York Times article points out, by doing this, whether that was their intention or not, uh, Justin David Sullivan has applied a decent amount of pressure to the Tony Awards committee and has done so publicly. Hence, articles are being written in the New York Times. Hence, I am right here talking to you about it on YouTube. So let me know your thoughts about all of this. Obviously, it goes without saying that I am an enormous ally and supporter of the trans and non-binary community, and my comment section is nowhere for any kind of divisive anti-trans rhetoric. So if I see any of that, I will just be removing it immediately. This is a safe and inclusive queer-friendly space. But I do want to hear your thoughts about this. I appreciate not everyone will necessarily be comfortable with getting rid of gendered categories, but I do think that we owe it to all of the artists currently working on Broadway and in the West End to be wholeheartedly inclusive moving forwards. And I feel like we as a community have it in us to find a way of doing that. I'm being very positive about this right now. So let me know all of your thoughts and together we will be the change. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my Stagey YouTube channel. I talk about stuff like this all the time. I review shows, I go see stuff, I make weekly vlogs, and I have lots of other fun videos planned. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a Stagey day. For 10 more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>